Welcome to the Center for Reproductive Medicine's Ovulation Induction, also known as Getting Pregnant Using Daily Injectable Medication. Call with the onset of your period. First aid, full flow, heavy enough to use a pad or a tampon. We don't count spotting or light flow. Consult your nurse if you have irregular cycles. Call during regular business hours, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 p.m., and leave a message on the nurse voicemail. If you start on the weekend, don't panic. Just leave a message. We'll return your call on Monday. We never do any of our testing on day one. Make sure that you call us with the first day of your period full flow, heavy enough to use a pad or a tampon. Your nurse will schedule you to come in for your ultrasound and labs on day two, three, or four. Make sure that you don't wear any perfumes or colognes out of respect to the other patients and our staff. Make sure that you set up your voicemail to receive instructions in the event that you can't get to your phone in time. Your medications will be called into a mail order pharmacy. We'll give you the phone number to call that pharmacy. It's always good to understand your insurance benefits. You'll need to contact the mail order pharmacy and pay them for your medications. Have those medications delivered to your home. CRM can't be responsible for your medications if they're delivered to our offices. Cycle management. Your first ultrasound is always called your baseline ultrasound and blood work. You'll come in day two, three, or four to get your ultrasound and labs. You'll receive a call late in the same day that you came in for that ultrasound with instructions. Please don't mix or take any of the medications unless instructed by your nurse. You usually will start your medications the day of your baseline. We don't perform any baselines as a general rule on the weekends. 2.30 is the latest that we can perform an ultrasound in labs as long as we have staff available to do that. The physicians will not allow any patients to take medications without being monitored. This is a graph showing the first phase of your medication. This is either going to be Folistem or Gonalef for most people. The main thing is, is that you call us with the first day of your period full flow heavy enough to use a pad or a tampon. If it starts on the weekend, remember don't panic. Just leave us a message and we'll call you on Monday, but be prepared to come in and on either Monday or Tuesday. When you come in, that's your baseline ultrasound. You'll receive a call the same day to start your follow stem or you're going to lift. Your follicles should be small and your lining should be very thin on day two, three, or four. Then what will happen is a nurse will call you back the same day with instructions once the physician has had a chance to review your cycle. They'll give us instructions on how much medication to take, when to take it, and when to come back. Your nurse will make those appointments for you. Generally, the first ultrasound after the beginning of drugs is usually three to four days from the start of your medication. So let's just pretend that you started on Wednesday, you call, you'll come in on Friday. The nurse will call you back that afternoon and tell you to take how much medication for Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, and the fact that you'll come in on Tuesday the nurse will then make your appointment for that lab and ultrasound. Stimulation days can be as few as six days or as many as 23. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that your follicles are growing and that your estradiol level is within a reasonable medical range. What we're looking for is the target follicle size for mature follicles is considered to be 18 to 21. As again, it may take as few as six days, it may take as many as 23 days. You'll have scans intermittent at this time. What does FSH really do? This is the first drug that's given in any stimulation cycle. Folistem or Gonalef are both FSHs. They stimulate the, the follicle growth. You'll take this every evening around the same time until your follicles are mature. Remember, that's 18 to 21 millimeters. It can take as few as five days or as many as 23 days. Your body will be the determining factor of your stimulation cycle. Follow stem down left. Take your injections around the same time every day within a two hour time frame. It doesn't have to be exact. What you wanna make sure is if you take it at seven o'clock every night and then you're out until about nine, 9.30, that's okay, just go ahead and take your dose, but try to get back on track. If you forget a dose, don't panic. Take the dose as soon as you remember it and continue until you're supposed to come back. Call your nurse if you want to follow up with her during regular business hours, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 p.m. 
Follistem. You can watch the entire Follistem video at the following websites MDRUSA.com, Village Fertility Pharmacy, Freedom Fertility Pharmacy, and Follistem.com. The following items before you begin one Follistem pen, one Follistem AQ cartridge, BD microfine pen needle provided with cartridge, alcohol swabs, sterile gauze, safety container. Wash your hands with soap and water and make sure you are working on a clean, flat surface. Hold the pen body firmly in one hand and pull off the protective cap with the other hand. Place the cap aside on a clean, dry surface. Unscrew the entire pen body from the cartridge holder. Place the cartridge holder and the pen body on a clean, dry surface. Take a Follistem AQ cartridge out of its package. Do not use if it contains particles or is not clear. Clean the rubber stopper on the cartridge with an alcohol wipe. Pick up the cartridge holder and place the cartridge inside by inserting the metal rimmed cap end first. Pick up the pen body and lower it into the cartridge holder. The black rod must press against the rubber piston on the cartridge. Screw the pen body fully onto the cartridge holder, making sure there is no gap between them. The arrow on the cartridge holder should point to the middle of the yellow alignment mark on the blue pen body. You must use a new BD microfine pen needle for each injection. Never reuse a needle. Confirm that there is a Follistem AQ cartridge in the cartridge holder. Clean the open end of the cartridge holder with an alcohol wipe. Pick up the BD microfine pen needle. Peel off the protective paper seal. Do not touch the needle or place an open needle on any surface. Hold the outer needle shield firmly in one hand and the cartridge holder in the other hand. Push the end of the cartridge holder into the outer needle shield. Screw them tightly together. Place your Follistem pen with the attached needle on a clean, dry surface. The best place for the subcutaneous injection is the abdomen in the area just below or to the side of the belly button. Change your injection site a little bit with each injection to decrease your chances for a skin reaction. Use an alcohol wipe to clean about two inches around the injection site. Let the alcohol dry before injecting the medication. Pull the outer needle shield off gently, leaving the inner needle shield in place. Do not throw the outer needle shield away. You will need it to dispose of the needle after injecting the medication. Carefully remove the inner needle shield and discard it. Do not touch the needle or let it touch any surface while uncapped. Hold the Follistem pen with the needle pointing upwards. Tap the cartridge holder gently with your finger to help air bubbles rise to the top of the needle. Look for a droplet forming at the tip of the needle. If you see a droplet, go on to the next step. If you do not see a droplet, continue with this step. If you did not see a droplet at the tip of the needle, dial the dosage knob until you hear one click. With the needle pointing upwards, push in the injection button. Look for the droplet. If you still do not see a droplet, repeat the previous step until you do. You must make sure you see a droplet or you may not inject the correct amount of medication. Your Follistem AQ cartridge will contain either 300, 600, or 900 units. For doses of 50 units up to 450 units, turn the dosage knob until the dot beside the correct number on the dosage scale is sitting in the middle of the dosage window. If by mistake you dial past the correct number, do not try to turn the dosage knob backward to fix the mistake. Continue to turn the dosage knob in the same direction past the 450 units mark as far as it will turn. The dosage scale must move freely. Push the injection button in all the way. Dial again starting from zero upwards. Once you have set the Follistem pen to the correct dose, you are ready for your injection. Pinch the already cleaned injection site between two fingers. With the other hand, insert the entire BD microfine pen needle straight into the skin. Release the pinch. Press the injection button all the way in to be sure you have given the full injection. Wait for five seconds before pulling the needle out of the skin. 
pull out the BD microfine needle and firmly press down on the injection site with a gauze pad. Use the BD microfine pen needle for one injection only. Look at the dosage window. The middle of the dosage window should display a dot next to the zero. If the injection button does not push all the way in and the number in the dosage window does not read zero, it means there was not enough medication in the cartridge to complete your dialed dose. The number in the dosage window will give you the amount of medication needed to complete your dose. Start over with a new Folistim AQ cartridge and a new needle and follow all the instructions up to this step. Make sure you choose a different injection site to complete your dose. Place the outer needle shield on a flat table surface with the opening pointing upward. Without holding on to the outer needle shield, carefully insert the needle attached to the Folistim pen into the opening of the outer needle shield and push down firmly. The outer needle shield should now be attached to the cartridge holder and cover the needle. Grip the outer needle shield and use it to unscrew the needle from the cartridge holder. Safely dispose of the outer needle shield with the used needle right away. If there is medication remaining in the Folistim AQ cartridge, put the pen cap back on the pen body and store your Folistim pen in a safe place in the refrigerator or at room temperature. Never store the Folistim pen with a needle attached to it. If the Folistim AQ cartridge is empty, Unscrew the pen body from the cartridge holder. Put the pen body down on a clean, dry surface and remove the empty Folistim AQ cartridge from the cartridge holder. Safely dispose of the empty Folistim AQ cartridge right away in the same safety container that you used for needle disposal. Now put the Folistim pen back together without a cartridge and cover with the cap to store for your next injection. Your second phase medication is called the trigger shot. This is Novaril, Pregnil, Generic HCG, or Avadril. Up until this point, you've been trying to get your follicles to maturity, which is 18 to 21, but you're there now. So your nurse will give you instructions on the day that you've come in for your blood work and ultrasound. The physician has looked at your scans and determined that you need to take your trigger shot. So your nurse will give you those instructions and review how to do these injections. If you're doing timed intercourse, she'll also tell you what days are the best optimal days for you to have intercourse. If you're doing insemination and you live greater than an hour away, your husband or partner will need to collect his specimen at our offices. If you live less than an hour away, your husband can bring the specimen in provided that you've picked up the appropriate materials. The trigger shot. This is your Novaril, Pregnil, Generic HCG, and Avadril. This is your second phase drug. These are all drug names from different manufacturers. This shot triggers ovulation and you'll only get one of them. You'll be instructed on when to take the injection. You'll stop your Folistim or other daily injectables. Do not mix or take the trigger shot unless instructed by your doctor or your nurse. The package insert states that this injection must be given intramuscularly. This can be taken subcutaneously. Make sure that you don't test for pregnancy because it will give you a false positive. You may have an area of irritation at the injection site. It can be as big as a wasp thing or burn like a sunburn and be itchy and red. Don't think that you did anything wrong. This is just from the preservatives in the medication. Using your thumb, flip the protective plastic caps off of the vial of Novarel or HCG and vial of diluent. Wipe the top of the vials with an alcohol swab. Remove the wrapping from the syringe and long reconstitution needle. Twist the reconstitution needle onto the syringe. Carefully pull or twist off the needle cap. Draw air into the syringe by pulling back the plunger to approximately the 1 milliliter 1 cc marking. Place the vial of diluent on a hard, flat surface. Carefully insert the needle through the marked center circle of the rubber stopper into the vial of sterile water. Gently press on the syringe plunger. This will allow the air to enter the vial, which makes withdrawing the solution easier. Without removing the needle, invert the vial and slowly pull back the needle as far as needed to withdraw 1 cc of diluent into the syringe. Make sure the tip of the needle remains in the diluent 
by slowly backing the needle out of the vial to withdraw the diluent. You will only be using a portion of the diluent. Remove the needle and syringe from the vial. Place the vial containing Novarel or HCG on a hard, flat surface. Insert the needle through the marked center circle of the rubber stopper into the vial. Slowly inject the sterile diluent into the vial of Novarel or HCG by pressing down on the syringe plunger. Without removing the needle from the vial, gently rotate the vial between your fingers until all of the powder is dissolved. Do not shake. Without removing the needle, invert the vial and slowly pull back on the syringe as far as needed and withdraw the entire contents of the vial into the syringe. Make sure that the tip of the needle remains in the solution by slowly backing it out of the vial to withdraw as much of the solution as possible. Remove the needle and syringe from the vial. Recap the reconstitution needle and remove the needle by twisting it off the syringe. Discard used needle in your safety container. Remove the wrapping from the administration needle. Twist the administration needle onto the syringe. Carefully pull or twist off the protective needle cap. To remove any air bubbles in the syringe, point the needle upward and gently tap on the syringe. When all bubbles have risen to the top, slightly press the plunger until a small drop of solution appears at the tip of the needle. Recap the needle. Your third phase medication is progesterone. There are three different types of progesterone that we'll go into in more detail, but they are Crinone, 8% vaginal progesterone, Endometrin, 100 milligram tablets, and also a compounded progesterone. Progesterone supplementation is important because it supports a potential pregnancy until the pregnancy can support itself. There are three different types of progesterone supplements, and one type is not better than another. We recommend whatever is most cost effective for you. You will choose one of these products and begin taking it when the physician instructs you to. The first type is Cronone 8% Gel. It's a once daily applicator. It's also the most costly. Coupons are available occasionally online if you prefer this product. The second type is Endometrin. It contains a 100 milligram tablet and it's a twice a day vaginal support. Coupons can also be found occasionally online. Your third type, or your third choice, is compounded progesterone 25 milligram vaginal suppositories. These are twice a day and do not come with an applicator. You'll have to place these with your finger. Insurance may not pay for your compounded medications. We'll review each of these types and the cost in the later slides. Cronone 8% Progesterone Vaginal Supplementation. You're going to keep this medication stored at room temperature. Do not put it in the refrigerator. You're going to take this one time a day in the morning. So it's best to get up, take your medication, and continue throughout the rest of your day. Do not lay back down after placing this. To begin with, you'll remove the applicator from the package. Put the plunger into the end of the applicator. Twist off the top. Place the applicator vaginally as you would a tampon. Depress the plunger, depositing the gel. Remove the applicator. Throw the applicator in your household trash. Typically, the gel stays attached to the vaginal wall to help you absorb your progesterone. It is important that the crinone comes out during the day. Vaginal irritation and cramping are two common complaints with any progesterone product. It is important that you ensure the crinone has cleared before placing another dose the following day. Crinone costs approximately $18 to $26 per applicator, so it is the most expensive product if your insurance doesn't cover it, but there are coupons available if this is your choice of progesterone. Endometrin 100 mg Vaginal Suppositories. Keep your endometrin stored at room temperature. You will not begin endometrin until instructed by your physician or nurse. This medication is to be taken twice daily, morning and evening. You'll have an individual applicator for each tablet. The applicators are single use and disposable. You can lay or stand while placing this product. Endometrin generally costs about $12 to $16 per day. 
for the supplementation. As with all progesterone supplements, you'll want to wear a pad to protect your clothing. Progesterone 25 milligram vaginal suppositories. These are compounded medications. They're available either through your local pharmacy or through your mail order pharmacy. Progesterone vaginal suppositories should be refrigerated. You'll need to place these suppositories twice daily. There's generally no applicator sent with this product, so you may need to lay down while placing the suppository. You'll need to insert the suppository into the vaginal canal with your fingertip. You can continue to lay down once the product has been placed. Just remember, it's okay when the product starts to melt. It's important that you place the progesterone. It's not as important how long it stays in the vaginal canal. You'll need to wear a pad to keep it from getting on your clothing. This product can cost anywhere from $60 to $90 for a two-week supply. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. This syndrome can happen when you're taking medications to increase the number of follicles that you have on your ovaries. The more follicles that are producing estrogen, the higher likelihood that you are to experience some of these symptoms. Don't panic if you're not having these symptoms as everyone is different, as well as every stimulation is different. Make sure that you review this part of your booklet regarding this syndrome. This is a comparison of the ovaries in a stimulation cycle. The ovary pictured on the screen is a desired ovarian response for an injectable cycle that will do IUI or timed intercourse. Notice there are two lead follicles, meaning that you will have a lower estradiol level. This means that this patient is less likely to experience the signs and symptoms of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. This reduces the chances of multiple pregnancies as well. If this were an IVF patient, they would cancel the IVF retrieval and be given the option to switch to IUI or timed intercourse due to a lowered response. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome can happen anytime we give you medication to increase the number of follicles that you have in your ovaries. The more follicles you have, such as the one on the screen, the more likely your estradiol level is to be higher. The higher the estradiol, the more likely you are going to experience symptoms of ovarian hyperstimulation. These symptoms can include bloating, nausea, diarrhea, shortness of breath, lower pelvic pain. You also run an increased risk of torsion. This is a twisting of the ovary cutting off the blood supply. This can also lead to hospitalization to manage your symptoms. If you're in an injectable cycle doing IUI or timed intercourse, with this number of follicles, your cycle would be canceled. If you continue and choose to do the cycle, you run an increased risk of having higher order multiple pregnancies, meaning triplets or more. IVF patients may go on to retrieval and then you would freeze the eggs and transfer them at a later date. Frequently asked questions and drugs during stimulation and early pregnancy are included in your booklet. Exercise, intercourse, and nail and hair treatments are also reviewed in this section. A chart is located at the back of your book to help you determine what drugs are okay to take during stimulation and early pregnancy. Just a note, there are no drugs that are going to interfere with your Folistem, Gonalef, or Minipure. A little known fact about CRM is that most of us who work here have been fertility patients at one time or another. This includes some of our physicians, nurses, and administrative staff. Infertility touches all of our lives long before we chose this field. We strive harder for you because we've been on the other side of this medicine and we understand your struggles. We are in your corner and pray for you nightly. Good luck from all of us here at CRM.